Again to Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem. My name is Silver. I'm going to be the host and bring in the thunder and bring in the lightning today. We'll be our co host. Chaotically. Oh, you might start doing puns. That's beautiful. It's really beautiful. With the puns induced, uh, today's creature, monster, uh, cryptid, some say, is going to be the Thunderbird. It's a common name for a creature used in different aspects of media nowadays. Uh, have you heard of the Thunderbird Chaotic? Very little, but I have heard of it. Anything you'd like to share of the Thunderbird before we get started? No, I think I'm going to save it for the mayhem part of it because it's the Harry Potter-esque kind of thing that I'm excited to talk about. So you go ahead, you go on with your bad self. Okay, well, the Thunderbird, the legendary creature, power and fame for the, for the North American indigenous people of the United States and area around is a supernatural being of power and strength it is frequently depicted in song story histories from the cultures people of the pacific northwest culture northwest coast area but it can be found the stories of it pretty much all throughout the u.s area pacific north coast to arizona to texas the mountains of colorado Appalachian Mountains area is where it's mainly known for the cryptidness. It is said to be darker in color, dark as the clouds, blueish, grayish tins, feathers, feathers of the storm clouds and lightning. It has a couple different powers too associated with it. It can bring thunderstorms as well as shoot uh, when it. Flaps at wings, thunder sounds, and also shoot lightning out of its eyes. Drag storm clouds along with it. The uh, Thunderbird, also one of the stories I heard, that I'll tell in a second here, depicted another power that I didn't know about, is it had a petrification power. Turn things to stone. Because in the story I heard about, I don't remember the people's names off the top of my head, but... This mother and son were starving, and the mother went back to the village, and they heard an uproar going down by the beach. So they went down to the beach, and they seen the storm rolling in. Leading the storm was a thunderbird. Mother, the son was like maybe six or seven, but the mother seen the thunderbird coming, and this thunderbird came over the rest of the village and everything bringing like a storm starting then the thunderbird everybody was scared that they were going to get smited by this creature and then they wish they knew who it was and but it suddenly dove down into the water picked up a whale dropped a whale on the coast for them and they realized that the thunderbird wasn't going to harm them it was bringing them food so the village could survive the thunderbird headed off back towards the nearest mountain Later on, the son was older, and the mother was older. Probably, so the son was out hunting. The son was a terrible hunter. He couldn't catch nothing. His best friend was a good hunter. He could catch things. Well, his best friend had already caught, I think it was like a rabbit or a deer, and already taken it back to the village. He, on the other hand, had not caught nothing and did not want to go back empty-handed. As he was coming through this the middle of this pasture just laid a whale carcass, a full-blown whale in the middle of the grass. He remembered that when he was younger, he'd seen a thunderbird, and they dropped off a whale carcass for them to eat. The sun could not see any type of thunderbird around anywhere. The sky wasn't dark, so he, and he, but he did find a feather. So he picked up the feather, broke it in half so it fit into his quiver, and ran back to the village. And he ran into his mother, and his mother's like, why are you running? You never run. You hate running. And he, he told him, she, he told her about finding the 
Thunderbird feather and a whale carcass, which the mayor overheard. He's like, oh yeah, we did that before. And the mayor took everybody and shuffled off towards this whale carcass. Mother grabbed him and like, did you did the Thunderbird give this to you or did you find it or? He's like, oh, I just found it. The feather was there and I didn't see no one. She's like, you idiot. You do not see him. Do not take the food of the Thunderbird. So he, they ran up to the nearest cliff to look overlook the where the whale carcass was. And his mother spotted the Thunderbird taking a nap. His wings kind of folded over next to the uh, mountainside cliff. And he's like, oh yeah, you better go hurry and tell them not to take the meat. The Thunderbird is sleeping right there. But by the time he got there, they were already carving up this whale, loading it in the canoes and sacks and such. And he got to his best friend who was chomping down on a piece of meat. And he said, you must put the meat back. Thunderbird is right there. He just asleep. Have to leave. The best friend's like, oh yeah, we've seen that already. No worries. Uh, we'll just, you know, sew the meat back closed once they'll never know we took any. That usually works. And a couple seconds later, the Thunderbird woke up, roared, and seen that everybody was there with the meat eating, which angered the Thunderbird. So the Thunderbird caused this, like, massive mini hurricane tornado toppling canoes, throwing people around, uh, debris hitting people. By the time it was all over, the son managed to stay alive, and so did the best friend and a couple other villagers. And the Thunderbird took off, but then the boy, or the best friend's like, hey, we still got all this meat, let's still go. But by the time they were getting ready to leave, after the best friend calmed everybody that was left in the village, the Thunderbird came back, and seeing that the people were still alive, Flapped its wings a couple times, looking over top of them. And the, the best friend and a couple of villagers, well, the rest of the villagers, started tumbling over in pain. Just saying they felt like they had rocks in their stomachs. The sun looked over and the whale was turning to stone, which was turning their whale meat inside their stomachs to stone, which was turning them to stone. The sun, after everybody turned to stone, Thunderbird left. He ran back to the village. And him and his mother left. So... It's funny because everything about the Thunderbird is amazing. However, what struck me most, and I don't know if it's just because I don't have a brain cell in my body, is that they approached this whale. And I don't know if you know anything about whales, but they can explode. Yes. Uh, I know. Yeah, whales they can literally ex explode, like, like hardcore explode and just send people flying. So they were ballsy walking up anyways on top of this whole Thunderbird myth. Like, it's just. Yeah, I don't think they would have known whales exploding. I don't think that would have happened too often. But you still got to think of the size of this animal washed up. They were pretty brave walking up to it. I imagine they probably just seen food. Very true. Later on, the story continues uh, further on down the period. He, the son gets married to his wife. And has four or five kids and they're settled down have their own little place next to a pond well suddenly everybody just starts throwing up black liquid and he thought something was going on and then the sky suddenly turned dark and he thought the thunderbird was causing this he kind of gathered everybody up and tried to help them out as best he could then suddenly in his pond started swirling and this large winged horned serpent came out of the pond and then Susik popped out of the pond and went to strike at the sun who is an old man by now he the thunderbird swooped down out of the sky grabbed it with its talons and they proceeded to have like this giant kaiju battle the thunderbird striking it with lightning and snake fighting holy crap then the, the Thunderbird eventually won and just kind of flew off. And the son realized the Thunderbird didn't really care about the people or anything. It was just a creature of its own that was fighting for its food, defend its food. And such. cannot control a creature or Mother Nature. Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the most dangerous things about things like the Thunderbird. You just can't. That's a nature and Mother Nature thing. Like, you can't. They say the Thunderbird can uh, 
become clouds. It can shapeshift into clouds. Some cultures do. Other cultures say it is a godly being, as well as that was the more Native American side of it. The cryptid side, a lot of people see it. For size wise, the Native Americans base be compared to the cryptids is bigger, I imagine. It can pick up a whale, which I believe that's has to be a pretty good size wingspan in there. The cryptid one is mainly in the Appalachians, from what I heard, in Arizona. It's said to have like a 30 foot wingspan with a head of like an eagle. The cryptid thunderbirds can also have the heads of owls or other types of birds. So they got like a more of a dimor sexual or a, they get more of a more dimorphism between the species and males and females. There's a picture that came out of a man who caught a thunderbird once and pinned it to his barn, but the original picture is said to have been lost in a fire. Said to be lost in a fire. Yeah. Now here's a question, like, um, and I don't know why this sparked this. How closely related is the Thunderbird to like? Because I not the Thunderbird obviously does way more, but like the healing powers, like the, there's just there's similarities between it and the Phoenix. Do we know how closely related those two are, or if they're like? Because I know a lot of mythologies like. When you start in one mythology and you look at Thunderbird, it may be Thunderbird in one and, you know, something else entirely in another. I mean, they could probably be, I'd say, related, like, cousin-wise, because the Thunderbird is thunderstorms, rain, hail, and the Phoenix is more fire, rebirth. Right, but, the Fe like, Phoenix tears heal, the rebirth can completely, like, break down and re- rebuild like they just there's similar like small similarities there i just didn't know if it was like an evolution thing where like the phoenix had come from could be like they're like they're uh different they're they're the same genre of birds but they're different species of birds like hawks and eagles kind of like that maybe yeah, like to an extent, like, you know, like like a lot, like you said, like the hawks, the eagles or whatever, but obviously there's a big difference in the way that they're built. Like the phoenix is much smaller, but in some mythologies, the phoenix is as big as a thunderbird. Yeah. Like they can be huge. So it just, it was just interesting. And like the hippogriff, like mm -hmm. a hippogriff is pretty close. Like there's just a lot of, you know. Yeah, a lot of the monsters are uh, similar body shape like that. I'm not sure if it's just region variants through the storytelling. If they seen a bird and just, hey, this would be cool if this bird was on fire. I've seen the Thunderbird compared to the, I think it was the American Condor or the California Condor. I think it's the largest bird left alive now, which was 10 foot, 10 foot wingspan. Which the Phoenix would probably be the same issue or same reasoning maybe in their culture. I haven't looked much up about the Phoenix. I don't know if it's in North America or if it's located elsewhere or it's I'm just another, sure. or if it's another type of thunderbird that doesn't has different powers because it's on a different continent the 70 to 30 foot wingspan i imagine you'd probably be able to fly across the ocean pretty easily back in the day like an albatross right yes right uh that's information i had i know they bring thunderbirds up in media a lot name things after the thunderbirds there's planes called thunderbirds like you said earlier harry potter Harry Potter uses a Thunderbird. Roll into the mayhem. Sounds good to me. I mean, as far as, you know, mythologies are concerned, you know, people think that mythologies are, some can be real, some can be, you know, off-putting. Thunderbirds is one of the ones that I've consecutively heard people talk about being more real. You know what I mean? Like, their existence people really believe in. Yeah, yeah, because I think even today there's still stories down in the Appalachians about Thunderbirds, smaller but still Thunderbirds that roam around down there. There's still right. crypt or hunters that go after them. Right, exactly. Which, interestingly enough, with the ability to hunt them and stuff, is there any actual reports of Thunderbirds? The last one, last Thunderbird I knew hunted was that one of the picture 
the guy that caught got, that it got burned. Yeah, down in Arizona. There is some pictures of the internet with people holding Thunderbirds or uh, pictures of Thunderbirds, but there is like long distance bird shots. Food or could not be photoshopped nowadays. Uh, the mm. Harry, speaking of also hunting, in the Harry Potter, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure we can say Harry Potter. <laughs> in that universe, Newt Scamander actually went to Egypt to recover a Thunderbird that had been poached out of Arizona to bring back to Arizona in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And he got stopped in New York for all the craziness. Right, so, Frank. Poor Frank. Frank. You haven't seen Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Is that the movie title? Mm -hmm. This might be a little bit of a spoiler. Skip a couple seconds so, ahead. Yeah, but <laughs> just skip, skip a couple seconds ahead or just, you know, just yeet it. <laughs> but uh, he ended up, uh, Frank ended up being let go inside New York City. As the yeah, producer, Rain... Good. To cure and make everyone forget everything that had happened. Yes. I think it was a combination of wizard power plus magic, thunderbird, brain making dance. Yeah, I'd, I'd say they definitely uh, like enchanted him with the whole. Um, Obliviate? Obliviate. I wanted to just say Obscuro, and that's not it. That's a totally different one, but it just wouldn't come out of my mouth. I out Harry Potter, the Harry Potter. Frank also. Varied in coloring as well. He was more of gold and white light colors, which would probably yeah, I match him his... more like hawk like, like you know, like he had the the prettier like. Set he of had colors. He had two sets of wings as well. He had the first larger set and a secondary smaller set, yep. which could also be more speciations deal. It could be a different species of thunderbird mm -hmm. causing this and the. Arizona, you would need more lighter colors for the sand and such. As in the mountains, you need darker for their. That's true too. Yeah, adaptation to your surroundings. I think the Thunderbird, in general, would cause a lot of destructions nowadays because it'd be it has a habitat loss. Where would it live? Besides, maybe the mountains. Then what would it eat? What would a thirty to eighty foot bird eat? Since all the whales are going away. Yeah. They'd have to switch to cows and people. That'd be a lot of cows. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously anything can hunt something smaller than it. But the way some myths, relations, I, did, I just, I know this, you know, anything can hunt something smaller. But the way that myths are told about Thunderbirds, I wouldn't see them turning on us, I guess, to an extent. Like, obviously anything could if it got hungry enough. But I just, I don't, it's not something that I, like, pictured, I guess, us being a prey to them. Would it be intelligent, though, as well? Would it use the cover of the storm that it creates? Would it go only after things in a hurricane, per se? Another thing I heard about them is they fly south for the winter. Because the, the, the serpent they are always fighting. So bird-like. A serpent that they are always fighting, like the one in the story, uh, they kill them off by winter, then they fly south when they come back in the spring, serpents are back as well. That's true. Very true. That's I'd see Florida and Arizona and all those warmer states getting more Thunderbird activity. They wreck buildings with their thunder and lightning. I don't know how they would petrify more people to stone. There's tons of possibilities, I guess, but yeah, that's Thunderbird's one of the ones, mythology-wise, slash monster-wise, that I think would be majestic to see. That'd be, that'd be one I would, like, look forward to seeing someday. As opposed to some of these other creatures we've talked about that I'd, I'd be okay never seeing. Yeah. I'd say it'd be okay to see. I don't think it'd cause too much destruction to us or mayhem. Mm. Unless it acts like a, because birds of prey only eat not very often, so you gotta stay light. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's they're just I you like like you said. I don't think they're there to cause mayhem. Like I don't think as much as we want everything to cause mayhem that we talk about. Yeah. It 
it's one of the ones that I think would just be more of a majestic existence. Like, yeah, they very well could. Like, if, if like we had talked about, if they decided to actually camouflage, camouflage themselves in the storms, pick off humans, like, there's a very dark side to this if we wanted. But I just don't foresee it being a thing with the way the legends are. Maybe that's where uh, all the missing planes go. A Thunderbird just snatches a map out mm. of a storm and takes them back to its nest. And hey, this is a big metal bird. Scary to think about. I eat rock whales. Maybe this one. They just go cow tipping in their spare time. It's fine. I think that's probably going to be all for today's episode. This is episode I so. four. That was a really like. That was a really. That's a. It's a more calm myth to talk about today. So I feel like it, it, we did very well on it. Not quite as uh, ghosty as last week's episode with the two icicle sisters or the ice, winter, yeah. the winter woman, the snow woman, and the icicle woman. The, the mythic, scary snow ladies that want to kill people. <laughs> yeah. All righty then. Join us again next Monday for another episode of Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem, where Silver and Chaotic talk about how they came to be and how they would be received in modern day society. Follow, like, and subscribe to support. Also find us on Twitter and Discord with the links below to keep up to date with the newest merch and activity. Besides, who knows what mayhem we'll get into next time. Only a slight struggle. The thunder rolls on that one. That was a good one. That was a good one.